everyone talks about how to get into IT. Certs, labs, do this, do that. But I feel like nobody actually takes you through the steps, the actual steps that you have to take to get a job. So a little bit of background on me. I've done this myself. I got into IT without any experience, without a computer science degree, and I went from zero to system administrator in four months in IT. So in this video, my goal is to give you the exact path that you have to take in order to go from zero to IT hero in around a year. We're gonna talk about many different things. Which certs do you have to get? How to optimize your resume? how to actually apply for jobs, and what are the things that you gotta do to set yourself apart from other people that's actually going to land you a job. I know the market's tough, but it's definitely still possible if you follow these steps. Let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna start out with certifications. Understand that at the end of the day, you still need a foundation. This is not something that you can just skip. Now the safest, most structured route for beginners is gonna be the CompTIA trifecta. That's the A+, Network+, and Security+, certifications. This is what I did. I've mentioned in other videos that the A+, is extremely expensive for what it's worth. It's two tests and it's like $513 or something like that. You could always skip this and get the Google IT Support Professional Certificate instead. Those are kind of go hand in hand. And the Google IT Support professional certificate can be a lot cheaper. If you're more technical minded and you don't want to get Network Plus, you could also get CCNA, which is kind of an intermediate level networking cert for people wanting to get into IT. How long are these certs going to take you? Realistically, the entire trifecta is probably going to take you between six and 12 months. I think it took me eight or nine months to get it. And I studied hard. Now this is definitely a grind, but it's not just for the paper. It's for the things that you learn on the paper so that when we get to the interview section, you can actually interview like you know something about IT. In terms of taking these tests, I highly advise that you schedule the test before you start studying and stick to that date religiously so that you know I have to take the test on this date. I'm spending hundreds of dollars to take this test. If I don't pass it, I'm gonna lose that money. It's a lot of money to take these tests but it's worth it. Now, I'm not making this video to sell you guys anything or anything of that sort. However, I have organized my favorite resources for all the certifications that I've taken in the description of this video. These are affiliate links. They help me at no extra cost for you. And they're also what allows me to keep paying my editor, my thumbnail editor, and continue making videos like this one. Check them out. They're also the best resources I can find. Okay, so we've got our certs. Step two is that we have to do some labbing. If you don't lab with IT, you're not gonna know anything about IT, even if you get certs. Understand if you're not touching tech every day, you're not really learning. There are a lot of really good lab series on YouTube. The one that I used before I got into tech was this guy named Kev Tech on YouTube. I also made my own personal tier one Windows Server and Active Directory lab series that you can find on my channel. I made it because when I was getting into tech, I wanted something like this that would really show me, hey, what are tech people actually using and what are they actually doing? Those first three certs are great, but they teach you nothing about Active Directory and Windows Server, things that you're gonna be using every single day. Now you can also play around with things like Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, Microsoft Entra, Azure, like these are all things that have readily available labs all over the internet that you can get hands on with and be able to talk about in an interview. The underrated move in my estimation is to play around in Microsoft. Understand how Microsoft 365 Admin Center works, Microsoft Exchange, distribution lists, shared mailboxes, Microsoft Groups, Microsoft Entra, dynamic security groups, groups, conditional access. If you can talk about all that in an interview, you're a beast before you even get in. And then very important, as you're labbing, document the heck out of everything. Learn how to use markdown language and learn how to ideally use Git as well so that you can use GitHub to post everything and have your own portfolio right there. Very, very useful and very, very underrated. Make your labs your portfolio, your proof of the effort that you've put in to learn IT. Step three is that you absolutely must 1000% be using AI every single step of the way. This is like a cheat code and I'm astonished by the amount of people in 2025, 2026 who are not using AI. Understand it's your secret weapon if you use it right. So for your resume, for example, you're gonna use ChatGPT to write every single section, every detail of your resume and you're going to roll through it optimizing at least 30 times, no exaggeration. You want it tailored to each job posting or at least tailored to each different type of job. So you want one for help desk specialist. You want one for junior system administrator. You want one for a network administrator or network technician. You want one for cybersecurity technician or SOC analyst if you're going to be applying to those type of roles. Make sure that you tell ChatGPT to quantify the results and to push the truth a little bit in terms of the experience that you already have working in IT. This is something that's imperative as well. You live in a world where people who are confident and able to show that they're actually accomplishing stuff 
are going to get a say before someone else. So the honest guy who says, I have no experience in IT, I've done this lab a couple times, is not the guy who's getting the job. It's the guy who says, I simulated a sim environment and blocked X amount of attacks and improved operational efficiency at my current organization by X percentage. And again, you don't need to learn the wording yourself. You need to have ChatGPT make all of this stuff for you. You literally can feed ChatGPT the job listing and say, hey, tailor my resume to this listing and it will do it for you. It's phenomenal. If you want a reference for what a decent resume looks like, I think mine's pretty good and I have it cloud hosted at resume.jakehallberg.dev. Go check it out, see what you think. And then for LinkedIn, you're also gonna polish your entire page using AI. Use action verbs. You should tell a story from your inception to how you got to where you are. Make sure that you have a background picture. Make sure that you have a professional LinkedIn picture. Make sure that your account is verified. All of these things are little things, but cumulatively, they add up to make you look like a better candidate. Okay, so now that we have our resume, our certs, our labbing, we're actually moving into the job hunt. Imperative. Do not wait until you have all three of those certs to start applying for jobs. You should start applying immediately. When I say start applying to jobs, it means that you actually have to, you can go to job boards like LinkedIn, Indeed, but you actually have to go to company websites and apply. If you apply to easy apply jobs on LinkedIn or Indeed one click applies or where you just have to put a little bit of information, it's just a waste of your time and it's just a waste of the company's time. You're probably not gonna get chosen because 10 million people are applying to every one of those jobs. It's a competitive market. Don't even use easy apply. Apply on those company websites. Now with regard to LinkedIn, I do have a secret sauce. Some jobs have a hiring manager like linked in on the job. They have a hiring manager tagged so you can say, this is the hiring team for this job. What you're gonna do is you're gonna use ChatGPT to come up with a direct message for that person. It's gonna be something along the lines of, hey, I just applied for this job, I have X experience, I think I'd be a great fit, you know, I'd love to talk with you sometimes. Again, whatever ChatGPT words it for you. This is gonna give you the best chance to actually get in front of an interview panel, which is ultimately what you want. You see Reddit stories of people who apply to 500 different jobs using Easy Apply and got zero interviews or got two interviews. The matter of the fact is, if this is you, you're applying wrong or your resume is terrible or both. 10 optimized applications is more valuable than 500 random easy applies. Keep this in mind because it is a mindset. This is not gonna be easy. You gotta put in the work, but if you work smart as opposed to hard, it's actually gonna get you a job. Now step five is you finally get to the interview table. You also have to master the interview game. The job is not yours yet, so you have to practice your elevator pitch to be able to tell your story in a concise and specific manner tailored to that job. Honestly, in order to practice this, you can record yourself on camera. You're gonna find that it's really uncomfortable to talk in front of a camera. I found this out making YouTube videos and it's something that I've gotten a lot better at over time and it's also just generally made me a better communicator so I can say my ideas easier. Now can you guess what I'm gonna tell you to use to help you prepare for interviews and use your elevator pitch? You guessed correctly if you guessed AI. Talk with ChatGPT. Ask it, what type of technical interview questions do you think I'm gonna get for this job? ChatGPT is gonna give you a phenomenal list of technical questions that you need to be good at answering out loud. Again, don't just think of your answers. Don't just write down your answers. Say the tell me about yourself lick of interviewing 10 to 15 times until you can say it extremely confidently. When you've come up with your answers, feed them back into ChatGPT and ask it what it thinks. ChatGPT even has this awesome feature now where you can like turn on the voice part of it. So it's like you're actually talking to another human. This is a day and age where we have access to resources that people 50 years ago would only have dreamed of and understand not everyone's using them. You can be less experienced and win if you're confident, coachable, and prepared. Okay, so here's the reality check with regard to getting a job. It is not easy. It's absolutely going to be a grind. I also advise that you uh, record all of the job positions that you're applying to in some type of an Excel spreadsheet and then whether they got back to you and things like that. This is what I did. When I applied to jobs a year and a half ago, it took me 32 applications in order to actually get a job, which again is relatively low. You have horror stories of people saying they applied to 500. I had zero experience in IT, but I optimized everything as good as I possibly could and I got in with 32. I now work remote. I love my job. This is not to brag. This is just to say that it's really possible. It's entirely possible that it takes you 50, 100, 150, and you get one to two callbacks. Those one to two callbacks are what you're looking for. It is going to be a grind. Again, consistency wins here too. It's the people who stick with it six to 12 months while they're getting certs and while they're doing all of this labbing things that actually end up getting the job. Once you're in, you're in. It's your golden ticket. You can learn as much as you possibly can. You can get as many certs as you can. You can really appreciate that you made it to where you 
you want it to be, and now it's time to do the work to actually learn to be technically competent, which will happen once you're in. The game is not that you need to be a genius. The game is that you need to be able to reach people effectively and show proof of effort effectively. So if you follow these steps for six to 12 months, certs, AI extensively, resume optimization, job application optimization, and labbing, I promise you, in a matter of six to 12 months, you will get an entry-level job. Again, if you wanna look at that resume, that's resume.jakehallberg.dev. If you want help getting certs, I have some of my favorite resources in the description. Those are affiliate links, so I make a little bit of money at no extra cost to you. That's also what allows me to keep this channel running, so I really appreciate you guys using them. And they're the best resources that I could come up with. I wouldn't peddle you something that I didn't believe in. This is the stuff that I use to get the certs along the way. Other than that, I have nothing else to sell you. This is just the roadmap for how to get that entry-level job. One last thing I want to mention is attitude. You can be the guy or girl who is all sulky and feels sad because it didn't used to be this way. You used to be able to get a job with just an A+. plus. You used to be able to do X, Y, Z. My life is so hard. If you make yourself a victim and don't take control of your own life, you're never going to be successful, even if you do get a job. The people who are successful are the people who take the reins. They've been given the keys to the world. All they have to do is drive. It's not easy to drive in this scary, chaotic world. But if you're willing to be confident, fearless, conscientious, hardworking, and honest, you will ultimately end up where you're meant to be. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you guys so much for all the support lately. Be safe, be smart, make some good decisions, and good luck on that job search.